wonderful, merciful Savior, precious Redeemer and friend, who would have thought that a land could rescue the souls of men? Oh, you rescue the souls of men. Counselor, comforter, keeper, spirit we long to embrace. You offer hope when our hearts have hopelessly lost the way. Oh, we've hopelessly lost our way. You are the one that we praise, you are the one we adore, you give the healing and grace, our hearts always hunger for, oh, our hearts always hunger Almighty, infinite Father, faithfully loving your own, here in our weakness you find us falling before your throne. Oh, we're falling before your throne. You are the one that we praise, you are the one we adore, you give the healing and grace, our hearts always hunger for, oh, our hearts always hunger You are the one that we praise. You are the one we adore. You give the healing and grace. Our hearts always hunger for. Oh, our hearts always hunger. Good morning. Good to see you all today. Fall is in the air, isn't it? Yes, it is. We've had a beautiful fall this far. So welcome. Welcome to everybody. Some announcements that I will go over before we continue on with our worship service. First of all, women of the church, you have a meeting today. Following the service, uh, you'll be in actually the high school Sunday school room on the east side here and the high school youth group also we have a meeting after church today and we'll be in the west side in the adult classrooms so uh, the ladies certainly after benediction or after god bless america you can be dismissed we do have coffee hour today in the social hall so we have lots going on time for fellowship i want to just make mention um i know you It's hard to think of Christmas, but it is going to be here just like that, you know. So for the Christmas Eve program, we have our directors, Katie Huber and Brittany Clute is assisting. So they need to know if if any of the kids are not going to be here on Christmas Eve. They really need to know that because they start putting this all together 
in this month of October. So please help them out. Also, we need lunch coordinators for the program practices. For the last, I bet, nine years, we've been blessed to have uh, Sherry Fryer and Kristen Heckenliebel and Krista Derby and Nicole Kisley all coordinate that. Now it's time for somebody else to do it. If you want four, that's fine, or however many you think. But Sherry could give you great information on quantity and anything you need to know. We just need some to coordinate that. Three lunches after practices, one snack on that final program practice that happens during the Sunday school hour. So all things we have to be thinking about. The flowers, oh my goodness, I think this one here. Let me check for sure. Yes, this one up here is a new one in our arrangements. They're all so beautiful. This is uh, given uh, by Kenny and Ramona Bittner in memory of Ramona's brother, Gary Huber. Maybe you know him as Shorty. He did pass away um, this past week. His funeral was uh, Thursday or Friday. I forget Friday, thank you, Friday. And the other four are, we had last week, those are in memory of Leland Weedmeyer. Thank you, Clara May, for sharing those with us, too. They're very beautiful. Coffee hour I mentioned. Let's see. One other thing I want to mention is next Sunday, next Sunday evening, we're having contemporary service. There's a little in the bulletin insert about it. We will have Tim Went sharing with us that evening. So some of you know Tim. Some of you might not. Tim uh, was an inmate down here at Springfield for... 18, 19 years, he, but he was the main man of connection for Ron Schaefer and the others that did prison ministry there. He was the elder in the prison and just did an amazing job. He's been out a couple years now and he's in Sioux Falls working with Kingdom Boundaries Ministry. He's done very well. Um, he'll be with us next Sunday morning also, not sharing, but he is going to share during the Sunday school hour. So we'll probably, I think, have the adult classes out here, the high school class, women's group out here. That will be after 9.30 because the, the junior choir practice is here first in the sanctuary. So if you want to join us, if you want to come and uh, listen to what he has to say during the, after 9.30 till a little after 10. You're sure welcome to do that. And Sunday evening. We're excited to have him. Well, I'll let you read the rest of the announcements as you have time. Let's bow our heads in prayer, please. Heavenly Father, we come with hearts wide open before your throne. We come before your throne through the blood of Jesus Christ which is the only way we can approach your presence. We certainly cannot come because of any good thing that we have done, because we know your word says that our own righteousness is as filthy rags before you. But thank you, Father, for Jesus. Because of Jesus, you have made us to be the righteousness of God in Christ. And so we approach your throne with praise and thanksgiving. You are the one that we praise. You are the one that we worship and we adore. You are the one who gives healing in whatever area we might need it. You are the one who pours your amazing grace upon our lives each and every day. And you are the one whose mercies are new every morning. And so, Father, we have so much to celebrate and rejoice in you regarding your goodness. And we do so this day. Thank you for this opportunity once again to come together as believers to worship you in spirit and in truth. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, our opening hymn is number 90. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee. Are we doing that straight through or... Okay, all right. Let's stand together as we sing this. <clears throat>
One thing I forgot to mention before you greet each other is just to make sure two weeks from today, Mission Fest, the junior choir is singing. Uh, it was flipped around, so last week's bulletin said it was cherub. Okay, so Mission Fest is junior choir, 31st is cherub choir. Take a moment, greet those around you, please. We will have our sharing of joys and concerns, and it's good to see Diana Havlin here with us all the way from Texas. I had to get a good look. Who is that lady? <laughs> and friend. Yeah. Huh? Okay. Wonderful. Good to see you. All right. Some other things I have written down here. Uh, I had looked in my book yesterday and I see that Kenny and Ramona Bittner celebrated their 55th wedding anniversary yesterday. Congratulations to you guys. Yeah. Also, um, Austin and Mandy Herbolt, well, they're not here today, I don't think, but Mandy had a little baby girl on Friday. Her name is Lydia Jean Herbolt, so congratulations to them also. We, I had a wedding here yesterday, Craig and Haley Schaefer, which all went well, so we're excited for them. Some other things here. Um, Renee Serrata had her knee replaced, her right knee replaced on Friday in Yankton. She got to come home yesterday and as far as I know is still doing well. So prayers for Renee and Linda Zabe. Uh, uh, she had her knee replaced on Monday and that's going very well for her also. She started therapy of course already. <laughs> prayers for Marge Seiler. This is Ann Ramis's mother. She was airlifted up to McKinnon Hospital. What day was that, Brent? Thursday, Thursday probably. Oh, yeah, Thursday or Friday. Anyway, um, 
Just a tough situation there. It sounds like possibly might come back to Scotland Hospital today, last I heard. So be praying for Anne and Brent and the family during this time. Um, prayers for Michael Nuss. He's had a lot of challenges with his kneecap popping out and I think they're still running tests and stuff, right, to see what's going to be done. Hallie Van Hove, who glad she's with us here. She had a pretty bad concussion a week and a half ago in a volleyball match, sort of face planted it. Uh, but we're thankful that she's doing better, coming along little by little on that. Thankful there were no broken bones. So anything else over here? Yeah, Teresa. Good. So she started this past Monday. Okay. Prayers of praise for Taylor Anderson, who uh, she did two years, you know, with the Navigators, and now she's going out into the workforce and got a job at a middle school in the Twin Cities. She started on Monday. So praise the Lord. That's exciting. Anybody else? Let's see. Is Carrie Dyke? <laughs> Okay, congratulations, Alan and Carrie. Twenty fifth on Tuesday. That's wonderful. And is whose hand is that? Andrew. It is coming on Thursday, Scott and this is birthday. Oh who? Grandma Joanne. Okay, sorry, Andrew. Well, I was in the right family. Joanne Nuss's birthday on Thursday, coming up. Happy birthday, Joanne. Maddie. Corwin, his birthday is when? On Saturday. Happy birthday to you, Corwin. All right, Trisha. Okay, Sandra Fisher is having a knee replacement on Thursday. This is the season, isn't it? Wow. <laughs> okay, let's come over here. Is that Ray Lynn? Okay, okay, see if I got all that. Carmen Taylor's birthday was Thursday, and Ray Lynn says she turned 40. So, <laughs> is that you have black on? Is that why or what? Oh, no. <laughs> and your brother, which brother's birthday? His is this coming Thursday, or it also was the same day? This coming Thursday, Branson. When? You gotta speak up. Huh? And Cousin Chesney, okay. All right, thank you. Okay, Jolene. Okay, okay. Prayers for yeah, Jolene, heck, Jolene Dangles, Aunt Arlene and Lee's, I don't, he maybe is at guards this weekend or something, but they're out, Aunt Arlene. Tell me your last name again. Stern. Stern, yeah. She's, is she out of the hospital now? She's still in, recovering from COVID and then she got pneumonia and stuff, so having a struggle there. Over in Freeman, right? Okay, all right. Okay. Oh, sound booth. Jamie. Oh, she did. Oh, goodness. All right. Prayers for Trinity Kasurik. She uh, tore her ACL, MCL, and meniscus. Playing sand volleyball, I think. So she's scheduled for surgery? Not yet. Okay. Sorry to hear that. All right. Justin? told me he needed to say something. Yes, I do. Well, um, October is Pastor Appreciation Month, and we just wanted to 
give this to Pastor Mike and Ann in appreciation of everything you do here. You are a true blessing to us, and uh, we don't have enough words to thank you. So um, I would like to have us all bow our heads, and I'd like to have a prayer for them. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, and we thank you for Pastor Mike and Ann and everything they do for us. They are such a blessing to this congregation and this community, Lord, and uh, we're so thankful that you, you picked them to spread the word of God to us, Lord, and we ask that you continue to do that, and uh, please bless them and have your hands upon them. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Justin. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, <laughs> thank you. You don't need to. Uh, to God be the glory. To God be the glory. Thank you. Thank you. It's our joy to be here without a doubt and serve. The time has flown by, 17 years. Can't hardly believe it. And People come visiting for funerals and weddings, and how long you been here? And so I say, wow. I say, it's a joy. It truly is, and it's exciting what God is doing in our midst. So praise the Lord. Let's pray for these uh, needs here. Father, thank you, and I thank you for this congregation, Lord, uh, that we get to serve here, and the, the privilege of it, and the joys, joys, the sorrows, Lord, the, the, all that life involves as we walk through it together as your people, as we rub shoulders and all the different personalities, Father, but you have brought us together and we walk in love one towards another. So thank you for everyone, family, home, and individual that is a part of this local church and those visiting with us today as well. Uh, we just... Love our Sunday mornings and all else that happens here. But Lord, I thank you for birthdays mentioned and anniversaries, surgeries, coming, uh, knee replacement for Sandra Fisher, knee replacements that have happened, uh, Renee Serrata and Linda Zabe. Um, Lord, we lift up Marge Seiler and thank you for just being with her and the family. She... Lord, she had been doing so well, and now a setback, and you know all the details. We just lift her into your hands, your everlasting arms. Thank you for being with Ramona and Kenny Bittner and the family, Monica, Huber, at the home going of Shorty, and just comforting them, and, and Clara May, and many others in the church who have had spouses go home to heaven in recent recent months. We thank you for the joy of a baby girl to Mandy and Austin Herbold, and we just rejoice with them. Father, we have several others uh, in our congregation with little ones in the womb, and, and we praise you for the babies. We thank you for doing your miracle work as you knit those little ones together in that secret place. Be with the moms uh, in the remaining weeks, days, months, whatever it is before their delivery. We pray that all will go well. Thank you for healing for Michael Nuss and his knee and Hallie from her concussion and um, yet an unspoken a young man. Lord, you know who I'm referring to for your healing power through his life as well. Lord, we thank you for the harvest as it continues on. We pray as always for safety during this time for all that are so busy helping. We pray for our nation, for our leaders, Lord, uh, all across the board. We just thank you for doing a mighty work in this land, and we know that you are by faith, and we praise you for it. For our troops that serve so diligently here at home and abroad, keep them safe, Lord. For all these things and Maybe something that I missed that was spoken. You heard it, and we lift this all to you. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to read from Galatians chapter 6, verses 7 and 8. It says, Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. A man reaps what he sows. We should know that better than anyone, right, in our farming community. 
The one who sows to please his sinful nature, from that nature will reap destruction. But the one who sows to please the Spirit, that's the Holy Spirit, from the Holy Spirit will reap eternal life. Amen. We're going to sing uh, the Lord's Prayer in place of the doxology today, so if you'd stand. <clears throat> Our Father, which art in us as your people in such incredible ways. We love you and we praise you. We bring our offerings and our tithes before you as a sacrifice of thanksgiving for who you are, for all that you have done for us through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. So we ask you to multiply these gifts for your work, the work of your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. And Lord, we confess our faith together to you through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the one holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. If the children would come, please, for the King of the Kids' time. boys and girls. How are you today? Good. I got a little bit closer today because what I'm going to show you in a few minutes is a really, really fast thing. So I don't want anybody to miss it. So don't sit on the floor. Sit like on the steps. There you go. Perfect. 
Well, do you know that Pastor Mike has been teaching us about uh, heroes of the Bible, and we're on Moses now, and if you remember, the Israelites were in Egypt, and God sent Moses there to, to, to bring them out and deliver them, and after plagues, remember the plagues? Remember the plagues that came on Egypt, but not on the Israelites? Do you remember any of those? Name me a couple of them, you older ones. Like, what happened? The first one was the water turned into, the river turned into blood. Lots of different plagues, the, the flies and the locusts eating everything and the boils and all the way up to the firstborn uh, died. The firstborn son died. But the Israelites were protected because God told them what to do, right? Yeah, God talked to Moses and Aaron, and he told them what to do. So they got to go really quick. They left Egypt, and they walked and walked and walked, and they came to the Red Sea, okay? This is symbolizing the Red Sea here. Let me see for how much I need. Eh, that's probably good. That's the Red Sea. Might as well just use it all. All right? And they got to the Red Sea, and guess what? The Israelites started complaining. What are we going to do, Moses? Here's our Moses. Here's our little Moses. What are we going to do, Moses? Now God, he sent us out of Egypt, and now we're here. We're going to die in the desert. And they started complaining and complaining and complaining. And um, Moses said this in Exodus uh, 14, 13. He said, don't be afraid. Stand firm, and you will see that deliverance the Lord will bring you today. So they get to the Red Sea, and it's just full and full and full of water and water and tons of water. Lots of water was there, and they didn't know what they could do. They did not know what they were going to do. So Moses, after they complained, then he said that, watch and see, and he raised his hand. Okay, you got to watch really quick. This is going to go really quick. You can, can you see the pepper? You see it's all spread out? Yeah. Do you guys see it over there? Mike, or Andrew, can you see it? You can stand up. You can stand up so you can watch this because don't blink, you're going to miss it. Okay? I'm serious. Stare at this. See all that black? Moses put his hands up. Look what happened. The Red Sea parted. All the peppers separated. And the people, the Israelites, walked across this Red Sea. Is that not pretty cool? Should we try to do it one more time? Yes. All right, I know it, I knew it. I don't know if it will, we'll try it. Okay, this is just water, water, our Moses, pepper, 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 pepper. We'll see if it'll do it again. Oops, all going to that way. Lots of pepper. And then you dip, you just can't use a regular, watch. That's not gonna do anything, see? Can't just use something without it. Can't just use my finger, well, you have to dip it in dish soap. See, this is my dish soap. Okay, get ready. It's going to happen. Everybody's eyes are over here. Ready? Boop. Oh, didn't work. That. There it goes. Woo! Probably had to get new water. It's separated though, right? The pepper separated. Okay, you can sit down now. That was pretty cool, huh? I like that experiment. But God, he, they came to trouble, and they didn't know what to do, so who did they call on? God. The same with you and me today. When we have troubles in our lives, when somebody really close to us dies, or when our pet dies, or when things aren't going well, and we're sad, we call out to God, and he will help us through our trouble. He made a way for the Israelites to cross over. And he'll do the same today for you and for me. We just need to pray and ask him. Okay? You're going to remember who's, who, was, who, were, who was the Israelites' deliverer? God. Who will help us? God. Who will be with us in trouble? God. What do we have to do? We have to pray, right? And ask him. Ask him into our lives. All right. To help us. Let's pray. Fold your hands, close your eyes. Father, we worship you, we love you. We thank you that all through the Bible, miraculous things you have done to show your people how much you love them and how you will take care of them and protect them and provide for them and walk them out of trouble and through trouble. 
Thank you for doing that for these boys and girls and us today. I pray these boys and girls are a light wherever they go this week to shine for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, now you try that at home, all right? Pepper, it's got to be shallow, the water. Dish soap. Thank you, Ann. We're going to sing number 543 here till the storm passes by. So we haven't sung this a lot in church, but if you, you might remember during the time where we were shut down and pre-recording our services, we had done just a special pre-recording of a time of praise unto the Lord. And one of the songs we did during that time was this one, <clears throat> and we had so many comments about it. So I had chosen it today, and I said to Jennifer on Monday, I said, I wonder if Caden Fisher's going to be home this weekend. Well, he is. Here he is. So I asked him to sing this along, because him and I sort of did it together on that pre-recording. So it's not a special. You join along and sing, please, till the storm passes by.
Thank you. Let's have a prayer here. Yeah, we can step over there. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, Lord, we think of the 91st Psalm with those words, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty, and I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge, my fortress, my God, in whom I trust. And that is you, and Father, our trust is entirely upon you and in you and in your word, and we thank you that you hide us in that secret place. You are faithful. We love you with all of our hearts. We love your word and we love to look into it. So thank you, Father, for this morning to do that. I ask you to speak through me by your spirit today. And I thank you for our college students. There's others home for this long weekend as well. Bless them. Taylor, for the job you provided her with. We just thank you for working in all of their lives by your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hebrews chapter 11, just a second. I'm going to read a couple verses here, starting in verse 29, which will be the verse that we are going to focus on this morning. By faith, the people passed through the Red Sea as on dry land. But when the Egyptians tried to do so, they were drowned By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after the people had marched around them for seven days. By faith, the prostitute Rahab, because she welcomed the spies, was not killed with those who were disobedient. The other passage will be Exodus 14. Now, on this, Jamie, I guess I didn't tell you. You can leave that up there. Most of this, I'm going to go through parts as I go through the sermon, okay? So you can just leave up there and on the screen, and we'll go part by part, part by part. When we go through a chapter, this is just one chapter of the book of Hebrews, chapter 11. It's called expository preaching when you just go verse by verse. Some ministers, that is all they do all the time. I sort of go back and forth, but this chapter 11, this is what I've been doing. If you want to know, this is the 15th sermon on Hebrews chapter 11. Anybody kept track? Probably not. I do. (laughs) So there's, and even when I go on this one verse, 29, we go back to Exodus 14, I'm really just skimming the surface of what could be said on all of this. So by faith, the people came through the Red Sea as on dry land or dry ground. It, It says in this chapter 14 of Exodus, four times it's, emphasizes that ground was dry. Oddly enough, interesting enough, we're working on this similar place in the high school Sunday school class. And so for about 10 minutes of the class, I've found the clip of the Ten Commandments, which where we are with the scripture lesson. So I told the kids this morning, because in the movie, it's showing as they're starting in down the Red Sea, it's all wet and sloppy and muddy. Well, that's Hollywood for you. You know, they got to try and spice it up. Is that what the Bible says? No. It says over and over and over again, they went through on dry land, dry ground. It was a miracle. So God will make a way. He'll make a way. If you're doing your notes in the outline, letter A, we'll just jump right into this. Do not be afraid. Stand firm. This was Moses as he was exhorting the whole nation of Israel, exhorting them by the Spirit of God. Let Number one, why? They were terrified, and they had a right to be terrified. My goodness. Let's start out here at verse 10 of this. As Pharaoh approached, the, as Pharaoh approached the Israelites looked up, and there were the Egyptians marching after them. Now, I didn't start earlier, but I think we all know, hopefully, First, after the 10th plague is finally what broke Pharaoh down enough to say to Israel, the slave labor force in that country, 
to, to, to Moses, get out of here. Take your wives, your kids, your animals, and just go. He had lost his very own son. That's what broke him. It wasn't even 24 hours later. He's like, what have I done? What have I done? And he gets the army together. Get them. Get them back here. Going on. So they saw, they're out there, up to the Red Sea. They were terrified and they cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you brought us to the desert to die? What have, what have you, okay, got to blame somebody, right? Got to blame Moses. What have you done to us by bringing us out of Egypt? Didn't we say to you in Egypt, leave us alone, let us serve the Egyptians? It would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the desert. Really? <laughs> they had been crying out to God for 400 years for their deliverer to come to get them out of that bondage. They had watched the 10 plagues. They had seen the miracles of those that the, every one of those plagues came on the Egyptians, not on the Israelites in the land of Goshen. When it was dark in all the land of Egypt, they had light. When they had frogs infesting their homes, they had no frogs. Whatever all of those plagues were, the firstborn didn't die. But as I talked in Sunday school with the high schoolers, part of this, see, they were so quick to complain. Anytime trouble came against them, they always went to the negative right away. Rawr! I know why you did this. Bring us out here to die. That's part of that fallen nature that we all struggle with, isn't it? We all do. But as we grow in faith, that should be less. But they, were, they had this slave mentality. All those years were slaves, were nothing. And so that takes time to get that out, that stinking thinking out, right? It, it's like they wanted to go back into the bondage that they were comfortable with in Egypt rather than to experience God's power, his miraculous power. Does that seem odd? In a way, but yet, you know, talking about uh, Tim Went, as I announced, coming next week. Now, there's a man, by God's grace and mercy, who has riven, risen above his past, risen above 18 or 19 years in prison. That's a long time. I can't even imagine. And has come out strong and serving the Lord for two years out. Um, we've seen others that we've known that maybe made it a year and, and then fall back in. Um, I've known some as we were before COVID when there was more active ministry going on down there. Some of the, those guys, as they're nearing their exit date from prison, they get very, very nervous because they've been told everything to do, when to get up, when to eat, when to have rec time, when to go to bed, when to do everything. And all of a sudden, you're out. And so, maybe I have no support. They get that, just like the Egyptians, they had that slave mentality. And God, it was going to take time to bring them out of that as his people. And so he does. Number two, so number one, they were terrified. Of course they were. There's this massive, powerful, most powerful army of the world chasing them down. Number two, they, you know what? They had to be reminded. They had to be reminded of who God is. No matter how long we've known the Lord or walked with him, we have to have that. That's part of why we gather together every week. Verse 13, Moses answered the people, do not be afraid. Stand firm and you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring you today. The Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. All right. When he said, the Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. Did they have a clue how that was going to happen? They had no clue. The Red Sea was still right there before them. Who could have imagined what was going to happen next? Nobody in their wildest dreams. How, how is this going to happen? We're never going to see them again. 
God will fight for you. You need only to be still. All right, so that doesn't mean when he says you only need to be still, that doesn't mean you don't have to do anything. Just stand there. Um, God's going to transport you supernaturally across the Red Sea, maybe, or do something. Well, he is going to do something. But we have to do something, too. They were trapped. They were literally trapped against that Red Sea. There was nowhere to go. We've probably all felt that way in different times in our lives, haven't we? Situations, circumstances we're in, maybe some of you are in that right now where you just feel trapped. I don't know where to go. I don't know how this is going to work out. If, if we're not careful, if we dwell on that too much, what sets in? Anxiety, sometimes panic attacks, things like that. No, that's where, that's where we got to, no, now I got to get my focus off that and on to the Lord and his word. The Lord will fight for you. Okay, let her be. He says, go forward in faith. That's what I'm saying for the point. Go forward in faith, right? First, do not be afraid. Stand firm. Second, let her be. You got to go forward in faith. Number one, use what God has given you. That seems so simple, doesn't it? But it's not always, is it? Verse 15, then the Lord said to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to move on. Raise your staff. That's what God had given him. Thanks for raising that staff there, Brockton. <laughs> your hymnal. Raise your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea to divide the water so that the Israelites can go through on dry ground. Let's see, 17, I didn't have, but go ahead and flip the screen there. I'll, I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they will go in after them. And I will gain glory through Pharaoh and all his army through his chariots and his horsemen. Verse 18, the Egyptians will know that I am the Lord when I gain glory through Pharaoh, his chariots, and his horsemen. God had a plan here. Too often, what? Use what you have, what God has given you. Moses had seen God do incredible things with that staff, starting way up there on the mountain of God, Mount Horeb, when he appeared to him in the burning bush, telling him to go, and Moses is like, I can't, and, and he has all those excuses. We went through those five about three weeks ago now, whatever it was. Well, who am I? Who am I? That was his first one. God's like, I'm with you. Well, what's your name? God says, I am who I am. Moses says, you know, I'm shy, Lord. I just, I can't speak in front of people. I'll give you your brother Aaron to help you. There, one more. The fifth one was, can you please someone, send someone else? How many times have we said that one? Lord, can you please send someone else to coordinate the lunches for the Christmas program? I'm not saying that to the four who've done it. They've done it for nine years. Just had to throw that in there, right? No, I, I don't have the resources, God. No, I'm too shy. I'm too busy. We all are. Whatever it might be, Moses, please send someone else. God's like, no, no, use what you have. That staff, that was the staff of God. Let number two under that way. The open doorway still requires faith. Still requires faith to go through it. That's what I'm meaning by that second point. Verse 19. Okay, sorry, Jamie, thanks. Then the angel of God. Now, I want to say something on that. On, on NIV, angel is lowercase a, as you see it there. I looked up New King James, capital A. I'm assuming ESV is capital A. I didn't double check that one. What's the difference? Big difference. Capital A, which I believe it should be, means Jesus. That's Jesus. 
when you see capital A for angel, the angel of God, the angel of the Lord, and I love that. He's with them in his pre-incarnate form before he was ever born in Bethlehem. Then the angel of God who had been traveling in front of Israel's army withdrew and went behind them. 20. The pillar of cloud also moved from in front and stood behind them, coming between the armies of Egypt and Israel. Throughout the night, the cloud brought darkness to the one side, that'd be Egypt, and light to the other side, that'd be Israel. So neither went near the other all night long. Another miracle. Jesus, the commander of the army of the Lord of hosts, as he told Joshua before they were going to conquer Jericho, we sing that song, God of angel armies. I love that song. They were experiencing such so many incredible miracles through this night. I, how could they even begin to grasp what was really happening as they were living it out? That's often how it is with us when we're going through things and we're seeing answers to prayer quickly, um, maybe not so quickly, but we're walking through it and it's not till we get through the other end that we look back and we're like, wow, God was in all of that, working his power. Verse 21, then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and all that night the Lord drove the sea back with a strong east wind and turned it into dry land. There it is again. The waters were divided and the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground with a wall of water on their right and on their left. What did I say? The open doorway still requires faith to go through. They're, they're just... Uh, I mean, what words, how could even words explain how you would feel if you had been there witnessing this in the moment? They still had to go through that Red Sea because they knew it was only God, only God who was holding those walls of water back. Just think how high they had to be, mounted up and swirling, just swirling around them. And there they go. If he was to let go or... At any moment, it was all going to come crashing down. They all would have been drowned, right? And there would be nothing they could do to stop it, which is what happened to the Egyptian army, you know. They had to go through by faith. They still had to go through by faith, even though the door was opened. God, as I said earlier, he didn't just transport them to the other side. Could he have? Yeah. You know he could have. He could have taken all two million of them and bam, bam, there they are. No, he wanted him to go through by faith. That had to, it was awesome. It had to be rather scary yet too. And then comes the whole Egyptian army in chariots and they're running on by foot. Um, I like that movie, uh, the one part we watched this morning, Moses is running behind, go, go, go. You know, he didn't know how this was all going to play out. <laughs> and, the, and they're going through by faith. Just, you know, often God, if, if you're in a change, maybe a change of a job or a career or your young ones that are in school, college especially, and you think you know God's leading and you know, maybe God opens a door here and you're going through it and you think, oh, this is going to be so awesome. I know God is leading. I know he's answered my prayer and we're going this way. And all of a sudden, things start going not so good. And what's the first thing we start thinking? I must have missed it. Lord, I must have missed your leading. This is not what I expected at all. I think any of us have been there, but you keep pushing through, persevering, and you'll get through there eventually. So that's by faith. We keep our eyes fixed on him all the way through those trials. Let her see God's glorious victory. God's glorious victory, verse 23, is about where I'll start. The Egyptians pursued them, and all Pharaoh's horses and chariots and horsemen followed them into the sea. Now there were 600 of his best chariots 
plus the ones that weren't the best. They were all going. During the last watch of the night, that would be between 2 a.m. and 6 a.m. in the morning, okay, is when this is happening. The Lord looked down from the pillar of fire, we talked about that before, and the cloud at the Egyptian army and threw it into confusion. He made the wheels of the chariots come off so that they had difficulty driving. And I've looked that up too, and they believe part, it's a, the Gulf of um, Aquaba or something like that where most scholars believe they would have come across the Red Sea they found remnants of this down at the bottom there of the chariots. And the Egyptians said, let's get away from the Israelites. The Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. See, Israel went through by faith. Egypt went through, how? Their own self-righteousness. Nobody's going to stop us. We're the most powerful nation on the world. Pharaoh, he thinks he's God himself, a God himself. They're slaves. They can't do nothing. They have no weapons. Go. His pride, his pride is what led to the destruction of his entire army. He didn't care. He was not going to let him go. That's how hard his heart was. And we looked through um, in Sunday school how many times it says God hardened his heart. Why would God harden his heart? Because God was going to bring judgment on Egypt, Egypt and all of their false gods. Verse 26, the Lord said to Moses, stretch, up, stretch out your hand over the sea so that the waters may flow back over the Egyptians and their chariots and horsemen. Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and at daybreak the sea went back to its place. The Egyptians were fleeing toward it and the Lord swept them into the sea and the water flowed back and covered the chariots and horsemen. The entire army of Pharaoh that had followed the Israelites into the sea, not one of them survived. God's power. Let's bring it up to these days we're living in. This, I have been all along, but again, in these last days, we are living in the last days. We truly are. And God is going to show his power in great ways. Specifically all how, I don't know all the details, nobody does, but he is going to. He's going to show himself as God to this world and all the corruption and all the me, me, I, I and all the self-exaltation that, that has come and our, we think we're so great we can now, um, without NASA, send rockets and common people to the moon and, and whatever else for billions of dollars that it takes to do that. And God is going to show himself strong. And one of the ways... I say this often, one of the ways is going to be in the rapture of the church, which is the next event we are waiting for, the catching away of all the body of Christ on the planet. That fast, going to be out of here. Oh, how do you believe that, Pastor Mike? I, I don't even understand how that could happen. You understand how the Red Sea parted? It wasn't with a pepper shaker. <laughs> I'll tell you that. Surprised she wasn't sneezing. I was just waiting for you to sneeze, dear. Ah, <laughs> Surprised she was shaking. Up. <laughs> you don't think God can do it? He can do anything. And he said it in his word. He, yes, the word, I say this because sometimes people have questions. The word rapture itself is not in the Bible. I realize that. But the whole concept of it is fully in the Bible. All right, we've got to get going here. Verse 29, but the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground. There it is again. With a wall of water on their right and a wall of water on their left. That day the Lord saved Israel from the hands of the Egyptians. And Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the seashore. They saw them. And when the Israelites saw the great power of the Lord displayed against the Egyptians, what happened? The people feared the Lord and put their trust in him and in Moses, his servant. 
They still, uh, they got in the desert, as you know, many challenges, much grumbling in the midst of it, but God walked with them all the way as he does so patiently with us. God showed himself as who he is, and he does today, and he will, uh, as the, the end gets closer, he will display his power more, I believe. Keep our eyes on him. Walk through the, whatever your Red Sea might be, walk through it by faith. When the enemy's pressing in hard, do not fear. God is with you. He's watching over you. He knows. He sees you. Don't give up. Sometimes I see ones get discouraged and then they back away from the Lord and, and the fellowship of the church. No, that's the total wrong thing to do. Draw near to him. Let's pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, what a glorious victory you brought. That account is mentioned throughout your word again and again and again. And we know that you are faithful. Now, Lord, you know everyone here. And I imagine there's some situations going on right now of individuals sitting in these pews. Maybe themselves, maybe a loved one or family member that feels very trapped, go, going through a very difficult time that does not seem to be improving. I pray that their hearts are encouraged today by your word, that you are at work. Help us to remember, Lord, it's in your time, not ours. It's in your way, not our way. For your thoughts are higher than our thoughts and your words are higher than our, your ways are higher than our ways. Thank you for this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, I couldn't think of anything better to sing than victory in Jesus with this text. So let's stand as we sing that. It is number 353. Sing it out. I've heard an old
Amen. Thank you. Please receive the benediction. And now, may the Lord go with you. May he go ahead of you to guide you, behind you to encourage you, beside you to befriend you, above you to watch over you, and within you to give you his peace. Amen. And we will sing God Bless America as a prayer for our nation. and guide her through the night with the light from above, from the mountains to the prairies to the oceans, white with gold. God bless America, my home sweet home. music. Ladies, remember your meeting, high school youth, we have meeting, coffee hour, whatever you want.